Welcome back to this course. In this lesson, we are going to talk about the for statement. For statement is another loop statement that executes a block of codes in a specific number of repetition. So the syntax is shown to give you the idea on how for statement is written. You have to start with a for keyword followed by the initialization which basically in a form of a variable, then followed by condition, just like the condition that we have in our if statement, and then the counter. So the counter is the same variable that we have in our initialization, which basically can be incremented or decremented. And whenever this condition is true, the statements enclosed in a curly brace will be executed repetitively as long as the condition is true. Otherwise, if the condition is false, it will jump to the next statement next to the for block. For us to see how for statement is used in C Sharp, let's create a new project and we will name this project sample4 and click OK. So what we will do here is to write the for keyword and then press the tab key. It will give you immediately the structure of your for loop statement. So you have there the int i, so it automatically created a variable for us. The name of that variable is i, an integer, with an initial value of 0. And the condition is i is less than length. So how many times do you want this iteration to execute the block of your codes? So let's say let's give this a value of 10, less than or equal 10. And then the i++ plus plus it means that the i will have a value of 1 plus 1 every time it loops back to this line. So our first statement will start having a value of 0 for our i and then it will increment 1 by 1 and if i is less than or equal 10 it will continue on executing the codes between the curly braces. However, if this is false then that's the time that it will stop executing this block of codes. Instead, it will just jump to the next line after our for block statement. Okay? So let's have here our message. Let's say console, that right line, I am learning. Okay, so there you go. We have written here the first statement which has an initial value of zero for our counter variable i. And then while i has a value that is less than or equal 10, it will continue on displaying this message. And then, as it increments its value, it will check if i is still less than or equal 10. If it does, then it will execute again this block of our codes. When our i reaches greater than 10, that's the time that this will become false. And it will just go and jump to this line following the for block statement. Okay, so let's give this a try. Let's run the application and then there you go. We have, how many lines do we have here? So we have 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So why 11? We only wrote here 10. Well, it's because we started at 0. If we're going to change this to 1 and then run it again, then it will give you 10 lines of I am learning C sharp. So that's how you use the for statement. Let's make this more fancy by adding here a placeholder, 0, and then add it with the value of i. So let's try running this application. So there you go. I am learning C sharp, line 1. I am learning C sharp, line 2. I am learning C sharp, line 3, up to line 10. That's it. Okay, so let's have a different example. So this time, instead of having an incremented variable, Let's try a decremented variable. We will start at 10 and then we will write here 0 and then this is minus minus, meaning it will decrement 1 at a time. Starting from 10, 10 minus 1, it will become 9. 9 minus 1, it will become 8 until it reaches the value of 0. And when our i reaches 0, that's the time that our 4 will stop from executing this block of code. It will just jump right to the next line 
after our for block statement. So let's give this a try. But instead of writing our placeholder at the end of our text, we will place it here before our text. So we'll add here our placeholder. There you go. Okay, so let's run the application, save the changes, and then hit the start. Okay, so there's no result because we have a problem in our condition line on the part of our condition. So let's check it out for us to see what is the problem with our condition. So here, we stated here that I will start at 10, and then it will decrement itself by 1 at a time. And this code here will be executed as long as i is less than or equal 0. Is 10 less than or equal 0? No. 10 is greater. So that is why there's no output showing in our screen. So let's change this to greater. Greater or equal to 0. Okay, so let's give this a try. Let's run the application again. And then there you go. It starts from 10 going to 0. But... If we start at 10 and then we go to 0, this means that we have 11 lines. So we have to fix this because we want to end at 1. So how do we do that? We will change this to 1. Okay, there you go. And then let's try it again. All right, so there you have it. We started from 10 going down to 1. Okay, so that's how you use your for statement. You can use the increment or decrement for counting the number of repetition and then use the initialization to indicate what particular position you want to start so on this line we want to start at 10 and we want to do that while i is greater than or equal to 1 it will only stop when our the value of our i reaches the value of 1 and then it will continue decrementing. From 10, minus 1, it will become 9. Minus 1, it will become 8. Minus 1, it will become 7 until it reaches 1. When our i is 1, then that's the time that it will ignore this line and then proceed to the next line of our codes. Well, I hope that these examples are clear to you and see you in the next lectures.